Experience the inspiring journey of Rani Lakshmi Bai, the fearless warrior queen who defied the odds and fought for her people's freedom with unwavering courage and determination. Join us as we uncover the extraordinary story of India's legendary warrior queen. Welcome to this video on Rani Lakshmi Bai, the queen of Jansi. Rani Lakshmi Bai was a courageous and inspiring queen who fought for her kingdom's independence during the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Her bravery and determination have made her an icon of Indian nationalism and a symbol of women's empowerment. In this video, we will explore the life and legacy of Rani Lakshmi Bai. Manakarnika was born on November 19, 1828, in Varanasi, a city located in the present-day state of Uttar Pradesh, India. She was the daughter of Maropant Tambay, a court advisor to the Peshwa of Bithor, and Bhagirati Bai. Manakarnika was the youngest of four siblings and was known to be a tomboy from a young age. Her father recognized her courage and determination and encouraged her to learn martial arts, horseback riding, and archery. At the age of eight, Manakarnika lost her mother and was raised by her father and her stepmother. She was an intelligent child and showed a keen interest in learning. She was fluent in several languages, including Marathi, Hindi, Sanskrit, and English. Manakarnika was also a devout Hindu and was deeply influenced by the teachings of saints and holy men. She was particularly inspired by the Bhagavad Gita, a sacred Hindu scripture, which she studied extensively. In May 1842, at the age of 14, Manakarnika was married to Maharaja Gangadhar Rao Nualkar, the ruler of the Maratha-ruled state of Jansi. Gangadhar Rao was a kind and benevolent ruler who was loved by his people. He was also a progressive leader who encouraged the education of women and supported social reforms. Rani Lakshmi Bai quickly won the hearts of her people and became a popular queen. She was known for her beauty, courage, and intelligence. She was also deeply devoted to her husband and supported him in his efforts to modernize Jansi. However, their happiness was short-lived, as Gangadhar Rao died in November 1853 without leaving an heir. This was a major blow to Rani Lakshmi Bai, who was devastated by the loss of her husband. She was also concerned about the fate of Jansi, as the British East India Company was eager to annex the state. To prevent this, Rani Lakshmi Bai took matters into her own hands and adopted a young boy named Damodar Rao as her son and heir. She also appealed to the British authorities to recognize Damodar Rao as the rightful heir to the throne. However, the British refused to recognize Damodar Rao as the heir and instead annexed Jansi, citing the doctrine of lapse, a policy that allowed him to take over any state whose ruler died without a male heir. This was a major blow to Rani Lakshmi Bai, who refused to accept the British annexation of Jansi. Lord Dalhousie applied the doctrine of lapse, stating that they would not recognize the adopted child as the legal heir of the Raja and would hence annex Jansi to British territory. In reaction of the unfairness on the part of the British regarding her territory, Lakshmi Bai consulted a British lawyer and appealed for the hearing of her case in London. This appeal was turned down. The British seized the state jewels of Jansi and, in 1854, gave Lakshmabai a pension of 60,000 rupees and ordered her to leave her palace and the fort. She moved into a place called Rani Mahal, which has now been converted into a museum. In March 1854, Rani Lakshmibai was forced to leave the Jansi Palace and move to the Rani Mahal, a smaller palace outside the city. She was placed under British surveillance and was not allowed to leave the palace without permission. However, she continued to plot and plan for the freedom of Jansi. After being expelled from her palace, Lakshmabai was firm about protecting Jansi from British annexation. Lakshmabai began securing her position and formed an army of both men and women who were given military training in fighting a battle. In May 1857, Indian soldiers were livid when they found out that the cartridges supplied to them by the East India Company were being greased with pork and beef fat to keep them dry. Soldiers were required to bite off the paper cartridge containing the gunpowder to load into their rifles. Since pigs are taboo for Muslims and cows sacred to Hindus, the soldiers were extremely unhappy with the East India Company. This eventually led to India's first war of independence breaking out on May 10, 1857. This war is also known as the Great Rebellion, the Sepoy Mutiny and the Uprising of 1857, among other names. When Lakshmabai heard of this uprising, she asked British political officer Alexander Skeen if she could arrange for herself a group of armed men for her protection. Skeen agreed to Lakshmibai's demand. Compared to the unrest in the region, Jansi was comparatively calm. Lakshmibai assured her subjects that all was well and asked them not to fear the British. The 22-year-old queen refused to cede Jansi to the British. Shortly after the beginning of the mutiny in 1857, which broke out in Meerut, 
Lakshmi Bai was proclaimed the regent of Jansi, and she ruled on behalf of the minor heir. Joining the uprising against the British, she rapidly organized her troops and assumed charge of the rebels in the Bundal Khand region. Mutineers in the neighboring areas headed toward Jansi to offer her support. Right till January 1858, Jansi was at peace. When the British finally arrived in Jansi they discovered that the Jansi fort had been well guarded. Sir Hugh Rose, who was commanding the British army, asked for the city to be surrendered with the threat that it would be destroyed. Lakshmabai refused to surrender and went on to defend Jansi from the British. The British bombarded the fort on March 24, but were met with heavy fire in return. Jansi sent a request to Tatya Tope, a famous Maratha leader in the First War of Independence, for help. An army of 20,000 soldiers headed by Tatya Tope reached Jansi, but were unable to match up to the British forces. Fighting continued and, when Lakshmabai realized that resistance in Jansi by her army was not resulting in anything, she decided to leave Jansi and join forces with Tatya Tope and Rao Sahib, nephew of Nana Sahib, a Maratha aristocrat who led the First War of Independence. Lakshmabai, along with her son Damodar Rao, escaped from Jansi one night and reached Kalpi where she joined forces with Tatya Tope. Here, they occupied the town and prepared to defend it. The British attacked Kalpi on May 22, 1858 and Lakshmabai and Tatya Tope were defeated. The leaders of this resistance, Lakshmabai, Tatya Tope, Rao Sahib and the Nawab of Banda fled to Gwalior where they joined the Indian forces who were guarding the city. Lakshmabai and her team wanted to occupy the Gwalior fort for its strategic location, but Lakshmabai was unsuccessful in trying to convince the rebel leaders in the area to protect Gwalior against the British. On June 16, 1858, General Rose's forces annexed Mora. On June 17 of the same year, near Fulbarg in Gwalior, British troops under Captain Heniage fought Indian forces being commanded by Lakshmabai as they were trying to leave the area. Lakshmabai dressed as a man in a sewer's uniform, completely armed on horseback, with her infant son tied to her back, began attacking the British troops. The British attacked back and Lakshmabai was grievously wounded. Since she did not want her body to be captured by the British she told a hermit to cremate her. Upon her death on June 18, 1858, her body was cremated as per her wishes. Three days after the death of Lakshmabai, the British captured the fort of Gwalior. General Hugh Rose, who was one of the British commanders who fought against Rani Lakshmi Bai, wrote about her bravery in his memoirs. He said of her, Of all the rebel leaders, she was the bravest and the most courageous. She was always in the front rank of battle, and her conduct was marked with such courage and determination as to win the admiration of all who witnessed it. Rose also wrote about an encounter he had with Rani Laxmi Bai during the rebellion. He said that he had offered her a safe passage out of Jansi if she surrendered, but she had replied, I have no trust in the promises of Englishmen. You have taken possession of my kingdom by treachery and fraud. You have deprived me of my husband, and have insulted me by offering me a pension. These are the crimes for which you are answerable to God and man, and to both you will have to answer. Rani Laxmi Bai's bravery and determination inspired many other Indian leaders to take up arms against the British, and she became a symbol of Indian resistance to colonial rule. In the British report of this battle in Jansi, Sir Hugh Rose chronicled that Rani Laxmi Bai is personable, clever and beautiful. Rose commented that she had been buried, with great ceremony under a tamarind tree under the rock of Gwalior, where I saw her bones and ashes. Twenty years after her demise, Colonel Mallison wrote in the History of the Indian Mutiny, London, 1878, Whatever her faults in British eyes may have been, her countrymen will ever remember that she was driven by ill treatment into rebellion, and that she lived and died for her country. Rani Laxmi Bai's legacy is an important part of Indian history and culture. Her bravery and determination in the face of British colonialism continue to inspire generations of Indians. After her death, Rani Laxmi Bai became a symbol of Indian resistance to British colonial rule. Her story was retold in songs, plays, and literature, and she was widely revered as a hero and a martyr. She became an icon of Indian nationalism, and her image was used in the struggle for Indian independence. Today, Rani Laxmi Bai is remembered as a symbol of courage, determination, and strength. Her story is taught in schools and is part of the popular culture of India. She is also celebrated in numerous festivals and ceremonies, and her memory is honored in monuments and statues throughout the country. In addition to her role as a symbol of Indian resistance to British rule, Rani Laxmi Bai is also remembered as a champion of women's rights. She was a trailblazer for women's empowerment in a time when women's rights were not widely recognized.
she encouraged women to be educated and independent and played an important role in promoting the rights of women in her own kingdom. Rani Laxmi Bai's legacy continues to inspire people around the world. She is remembered as a symbol of courage, determination, and resistance to repression, and her story serves as a reminder of the power of the human spirit to overcome adversity. Her memory lives on as an inspiration to all those who fight for justice and equality. In conclusion, Rani Laxmi Bai was a remarkable woman who defied the norms of her time and fought for her kingdom's independence. Her courage and determination in the face of adversity continue to inspire people around the world. We should all strive to follow her example and stand up for what we believe in, no matter the cost. Thank you for watching, we hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this.